<laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, so we ended up making some money today. Yesterday, obviously, there were a string of losses, but today we bounced back, and it was an amazing, amazing day. Uh, yesterday we had clear cut, very safe, tight losses. Today we ended up flying. And what's most important to understand is that your losing days do not define you. You could have a loss. You could have a red day. That doesn't mean that you're a terrible trader. But that's what we end up telling ourselves because we lose control of our emotions. And you can't do that. That's not, that doesn't aid you, right? And when you are trading and you have a red day, trading is very, very difficult to do alone. Okay, especially if you're the only person that you know that trades, you don't have anyone to talk to. If you're not in a community of people, you don't have anyone to talk to. You don't have anyone to bounce ideas off of. Even the people that you do know in person that are maybe dabbling in the stock market, if they don't take it as seriously as you, you'll never be able to really connect with them and talk to them about like your losing days or your green days. You'll like it won't really benefit you. So. This community that we've created is really, really, it's awesome. Uh, we basically help each other grow and even on losing days, right? Because not every day is going to be completely green. Obviously, the majority of days that we've had in the Discord have been completely green, obviously, right? But when you do have the losing days, regardless of whether someone is following the signals, regardless, regardless of what's going on, if someone has a red day, it's important to be in a community of people that are all trying to get better and become better traders. Iron sharpens iron. You understand? If you truly want to be a better trader with people that will hold you accountable and help steer each other on the right path, not degenerately trade, not throw away all of their money, uh, needlessly into anything right we are trying to focus and become high quality traders that can truly change our lives and change the lives of the people around us so if that's something that you're interested in um the proof is in the pudding first of all my numbers don't lie i've been showing you guys my trading numbers every single day you guys could click the link in the bio or in the comment section you'll see the discord you can go into the daily recap you can see the profit and losses. The proof is in the pudding. So if you guys want to be a part of a community that is truly trying to better themselves and, you know, we're making money together, click the link in the bio, join uh, by uh, going into the comment section, join, and you will not be sorry. So let's get started with the rest of the video. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Russell, it should also be a quick video because there's not really that much in terms of um, uh, analysis that needs to be done, but it should be a good and fun video nonetheless. All right, let's get started. First and foremost, we're starting off with the yields. So the yields are important because they have an inverse relationship to the market. If the yields are rising, generally that's bad for the market. Obviously, uh, we're not getting a clear cut bounce out of the yields. We are showing some bullishness some strength but it's not as defined in terms of a correlation with the market at the moment so we need to see if the yields can start to show a lot of strength uh above the these trend lines that we've been monitoring for weeks now right if they can start to really close above these levels here the four percent and these uh, levels at 3.97 percent that will end up showing some bearishness in the market so that's what I'm currently looking for on the yields. This is a 10 year yield. All right. Next, we're going to look at the dollar. So the dollar has an inverse relationship to the market as well. So um, if the dollar generally is rising, that is bad for the market. Obviously, the dollar uh, looks a bit better in terms of the correlation. I was showing a few days ago how the dollar, um, the lower level of the Bollinger Bands was pointed lower, right? And uh, there was a lot more room to fall to the downside on the dollar. And we ended up did, you know, we did fall lower on the dollar. 
And you can see that it was because, you know, the Bollinger Bands are just in a free fall. So with the Bollinger Bands in a free fall like this, we can continue to have red days without it really being um, a cause of concern and without it being very overextended to the downside. Okay, so there, so this is actually very um, bullish for the market. It's continuing to be a bit bullish for the market. All right. And then last of these three things that we look at is the VIX. So the VIX um, basically also has a much tighter correlation, uh, negative correlations to the market. So if the VIX is rising, then that is bearish for the market as well. Obviously, today, a lot of sellers on the VIX made a lot of money. So uh, option sellers, uh, as the VIX was trading outside of the upper level of the Bollinger Band, like I say, right, like when we trade outside of the upper or the lower level of the Bollinger Band, we need to revert to the mean, revert to the average. So in history, when the VIX is trading outside of the bands, we get pullbacks. All right. And this is not anything new, regardless of when it happened. It happened, we got pullback. So what ended up happening today, uh, intraday, we got a nice pullback. So uh, we're still looking to close, we still closed outside of the upper level of the bands, but uh, we did not close dramatically above 14 or 1450. So you can see that 1450 was the high for today on the VIX. And that's been a number. So 14, I've, I've been saying 14 and 1450 were major, major levels of resistance on the, on the VIX. Finally, you know, we're comfortably closing above 13, which is nice. 13 and 1350, which is a good sign for market bears. But 14 and that 1450 level, literally right where we wicked is very, very important on the VIX. So until we can close above 14, then um, anything below that is bullish for the market. And uh, for now, you know, we have the Bollinger Band starting to move upwards. So we're not going to get as abrupt. So basically what I'm saying is, so the upper Bollinger Band on the VIX is rising. Similar to what we were looking at on the dollar, where the dollar's lower Bollinger Band was falling. We can continue to fall lower on the lower Bollinger Band. Similar concept on the VIX, we can continue rising On the, along the upper level of the Bollinger Band without getting overextended. So this happening is actually, um, especially if we have continued bullish uh, momentum, this can actually be um, overall bearish for the market. And what I will say is just purely looking at this from a technical standpoint, this is not a bullish setup. This is clear cut This is a lot of this is a lot of bearish momentum. But the issue with yesterday was that we fell straight to a level of support. We fell straight to a level of support on the SPY and we fell straight to a level of support on the IWM. So the IWM, you know, we had that level of support at 196. On the SPY, we had that level of support at 468, right? And once again, in this market, right? You can't expect to go short at a level of support and you know um because the support levels have just been bought up so in general right the way that uh buyers and the aggression of buyers have occurred in this market so far this setup should be bearish but if we end up breaking closing back above 474 then we can really see 480 by the end of the year And uh, we're going to have to see if that ends up happening. So that is still possible. But in general, this is not this is not a bullish setup, in my opinion. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the VIX rise. I wouldn't be surprised to see the dollar and the yields rise as well. Because this just looks like a very ugly setup. The only thing that would really cause the market to bounce right now is um, buyers and institutional buying pressure. This is not a normal bullish uh setup though so um purely because of this big red candle at a major level of resistance that wicked above prior highs so this unfortunately right this would be a really really good shorting opportunity 
but given the market dynamic currently can't really uh <laughs> unfortunately uh, the normal bearish setups aren't really working so the best we can do is we can just go off of the trend lines that we have and the prior levels of support and resistance so 474 major major level of resistance on the spy moving forward uh the trend line for uh the spy for tomorrow is going to be 473.50 and the major support trend line is going to be 460 uh 470 so you know if we end up breaking below 470 tomorrow and closing then it would give some space to fall lower but here's the thing i mean we have another three-day weekend soon so we have a three-day weekend and it's going to be tough man it's going to be really tough to be bearish into into this but the setup is bearish uh but I, what i will say is you know we're taking it one step at a time um you know like there's not really i mean we didn't uh forgot to take these puts so hopefully uh they don't do too well in terms of the drop lower just in general uh you know this how is this like when you're looking at the nasdaq this is an ugly ugly setup when you're looking at the iwm this is also a really ugly setup when you get a wick above a prior high that is a sweep of stop losses does that make sense so when you get a sweep of stop losses generally you get a move to the downside because people that were trying to uh, go short here and then we got a so look in terms of day trading right when you get a setup where we're rising up right say these were minute to minute candles right and one of these uh candles we end up so look um this is actually a better this is a better way to uh this is a better um setup to describe it okay so this is a minute by minute candle okay and say for example you um you go short right here this is a minute by minute candle hypothetically you go short right here and you say okay if we end up breaking above the high i'm gonna sell for a stop loss right this next minute we end up wicking above that level so everyone that was saying okay i'm gonna have a stop loss above that level they got stopped out so when these people get stopped out that sucks for them but that is a very very bearish setup that is just meant to manipulate people so um as they get as these people that were short over here rightfully so they had that stop loss at that candle rightfully so right when you had this wick above these people start to get a bit excited and they say okay i was incorrect about my short let me go long as they began to go long that so number one they got all, they got shaken out of their uh bearish setup which is obviously the correct direction so number one mms don't want retail to win on the proper direction so they shook them out and they got them to sell their shorts number two as it rose above here market makers made people to become long so not only were they taken out of the wrong position they entered into the wrong position so sorry so whoa, whoa, whoa. not only were they taken out of the correct position because they were in puts to make matters worse they entered into the wrong direction because they didn't want to miss the move so they messed up twice so usually so given that right so i hope this makes sense they were inputs they sold the puts for a loss because we had this wick above their stop loss and then they ended up entering into calls when they should not have entered into calls because this was a manipulation wick okay so they messed up twice with that being said whenever this setup occurs on a one minute time frame what i do is i try to get as greedy as possible 
to try to re-enter short um, as close to the high of this wick as possible. The odds of us ending up making another high after above this wick without first making a much lower low, this is a very, very high quality trade to fall much lower on a one minute time frame, generally. But unfortunately, with this uh, very, very bearish moment, um, with this very, very bullish buying, right? It's unfortunate. So, but all in all, this is, that's a really, really good uh, bearish trade. And generally, we end up breaking lower and we end up comfortably seeing 462 to 464. So, you know, time will tell. We'll see how this plays out. But, um, yeah you know that's why this is just a really bearish ugly setup that's why with the dollar the yields and the vix that's why the vix looks like it could continue rising um the yields are bottoming out we could get a bit of a bounce and um the dollar ended up making another low we could end up bouncing on that as well so there's a few bearish scenarios the price action on the spy the nasdaq and the iwm also look a bit bearish as well so let's see all right only time will tell if we end up making another high, then this, you know, 478 to 480 area is going to be a really, really good um, retest to go short, in my opinion. So let's see, because that's what ends up happening on a one minute time frame. And what happens on a one minute time frame, daily time frame, it's all the same thing. So let's see what ends up happening. Uh, I am pretty interested in seeing... Uh, how bearish, uh, how bullish the market is going to end up being at the end of the year. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.